Welcome back, WNST, Towson to Baltimore and Baltimore Positive. We are positively into week two. So after all of that, all that fighting and clawing and beating of the Titans, Luke Jones, they're right back to where they were last year, except they're on the road this time going up to Buffalo. What a weekend. It was a um, super wild card weekend, wasn't it? Well, yeah, I, I guess that's the new term they're calling it. <laughs> But for the Ravens, very super. Uh, no question about it. And, and you kind of stole my thunder with what you just said. Uh, you think back to where the Ravens were 365 days ago. Franchise record, 14-2 and two record, 12 straight uh, wins, you know, most in, in franchise history. We thought of them, and not just here in Baltimore, but the rest of the NFL thought of them as not just a Super Bowl favorite, but the Super Bowl favorite, with apologies to the Kansas City Chiefs, who at that point were the number two seed in the AFC so you think about what has transpired since then, the loss to Tennessee, uh, everything that happened throughout the course of this season, you know, one in four after the bye week, the, the COVID-19 outbreak, everything. And now having won five in a row to close the regular season and taking care of the Tennessee Titans, exercising some demons there, getting a little bit of revenge there. Where are the Ravens? They're right back where they were 365 days ago as – a playoff team, a top shelf Super Bowl contender, not just a Super Bowl contender in the way that everyone who makes the playoffs fancies themselves as a contender, but they're now going on, moving on to the divisional round and hey, here you go, going to Buffalo and yeah, you can talk about the Kansas City Chiefs and they're the defending champs and, and they should be viewed in a, in a different light than everyone else, but beyond that, I think the Ravens are right there with everyone else that's vying to, to, to get to Tampa. And at this point, now that they've won a playoff game, now that Lamar Jackson has orchestrated a 10-point comeback win in January, why can't you do more now? Why can't you win more games in January? And, and that's where getting over the hump, so to speak, just opens up the possibilities of any of this can happen. Now, think about it. They are two wins away from being in the Super Bowl. Well, and exactly where they were 52 weeks ago. Luke Jones joining us here. If uh, you just joined us, you just came in, we're, uh, we're flexing our muscles a little bit here this week and uh, getting ready for second round, the Festivus. Uh, Luke, I'm going to say that I, I had my hands. I was out at the radio station all weekend. I had my hands on all the purple floodlights that I bought back in 06, and I'm like, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not breaking mess. But I did go purple shirt today. I did break out the, uh, the spring, uh, you know, the spring golf wear here, uh, hoping that, uh, you know, we're not golfing this time next week. One of the, the big parts is we're going to go through all the game. We're going to go through Lamar. We'll go through the Titans. We'll go through the Bills and, you know, how they played this weekend against the Colts and what happened with the Steelers and the Browns. But I'd say this, the, the notion that we're going to Buffalo instead of Kansas City, I don't know. I mean, it certainly feels like that it opens up the door for them to stay alive another week, right? But I think back to Denver and New England years ago, or I think back to where we were. We're going to Nashville when they were the best team and then going out to Oakland and winning. And I look at it now and I say, oh my God, if the Browns win, they could actually play the game at home. Nobody be there, but they, they'd have an AFC championship game at home. Yeah, and I mean, let's face it. The two best teams in the AFC this year were Kansas City, and then by season's end, you had to give Buffalo their props. Buffalo's lost one game since October. That one game was the Kyler Murray Hail Mary uh, out in Arizona. So I, they were the number two seed. They deserved to be the number two seed. But like you just mentioned with the idea of where the Ravens were eight years ago, going to Denver and then having a, another shot at the Patriots. And I say this with no disrespect to the Browns because look what they did Sunday night, but it kind of felt like if the Ravens were going to get through Tennessee, as they did on Sunday, you were going to face most likely Buffalo and Kansas City. And I still feel like that's how it's going to be if they're going to get to the Super Bowl. But uh, you do put yourself in a situation that the next psychological hang up, the, the next hurdle they have, so to speak, is what? Getting by the Chiefs in terms of things we've talked about over the course of the last couple of years. So if you delay that a week, but at the same time, if you look at the eyeball test, you can make an argument that Buffalo has been better than Kansas City over the last six, seven weeks. So be careful what you wish for in that regard. But, but there is that sense of going up against the Bills, the team that was every bit as hot as them, if not hotter, to close the regular season. And they, they played get, this week, and the Chiefs had an extra week. So, like, exactly. I, and I don't know. Do you want a rested team, or do you want an unrested? I mean, we've been discussing this since the beginning of time, right, about resting starters and yeah. who's more fresh. 
Ravens look pretty fresh on Sunday. The Ravens look like it was opening day on Sunday to me. Well, I mean, after the first quarter, uh, I mean, certainly it didn't start out uh, all that favorably. And, and I think for me, and as I wrote at BaltimorePositive.com, as much as the focus will be on Lamar's legs and the 48-yard touchdown, and uh, I mean, we'll get to Mike Vrabel's decision on fourth and two with 10 minutes ago, which I thought was awful. And it happened he, twice in the same day. Team, cost his team the football game yeah. ultimately or whatever chance they had left of, of winning the football game but I go back to the final play of the first quarter think about it the Ravens are down 10 nothing on the previous drive Lamar Jackson had thrown the interception you're in a position where you're facing a third and seven you're in your own territory you're in danger of having a third straight empty possession to start the football game and if you punt the football back to to the Titans at that point You're giving them a chance after your defense had just been on the field for more than 10 minutes in the first quarter to open up a three-score lead early in the second quarter if they put together another drive. I mean, you you think about that. As much as we talk about, you know, one play does not make a full football game, we also know that every play affects the ultimate sequence of events in a football game. Well, how about the Steelers? The ball goes over his head on the first play, and they never got up. I mean, maybe they got up at 11 o'clock at night, maybe sort of kind of. but, But to your point, how do you fall behind early? Well, you know, the Ravens did it, and the Steelers did it early. Quickly, well, they did. very quickly. They did, but going back to the play that I was talking about, when it's third and seven, which is not generally a place the Ravens want to be very often, third and medium to long distance, well, Lamar Jackson faces the blitz. He escapes, he rolls to his right, and he finds Mark Andrews for a first down to close uh, the, the first quarter, which to me was just – an enormous play right there. Now, they didn't score a touchdown on that drive, but what happens after that? They move the ball down the field. They take some time off the clock. They give the defense uh, a chance to regroup, uh, a chance to kind of figure out what Tennessee was doing with their passing game, uh, and they get a field goal out of it. So suddenly it's 10-3. to You're only down seven points. It's a one-score game. Your defense just had a chance to catch its breath. And what does it mean for the football team? It slows the heartbeat, so to speak. Even though John Harbaugh said that no one blinked on the sideline and Derek Wolf said no one blinked on the sideline and no one was paying attention to the scoreboard, you know very well, because these are all human beings and there's the human element and the psychological element to this. When they fall behind 10 nothing in the first quarter, you know, even if it was for a split second, there were coaches and players on that sideline thinking to themselves, oh man, here we go again. Are you kidding me? Even if just for a second, and then they get back to it. Well, but... Lamar had that moment right before the right before the run, right? I mean, Lamar was pounding the ground in the bottom of the pile when he got caught, right? And on the next play, he he broke he he, he broke the forty eight yard touchdown play. Uh, that frustration, that visible, we're getting our ass kicked, and we don't know what to do about it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I've seen I mean, that look and over right. the last two years when they've lost. They've gone into a little bit of a hole, led by their leader it, it, to, to some degree. Uh, sloppy tackling on the other side. I mean, you know, this team, if they lose this week in Buffalo, I, I promise you that'll be the story. It'll be Lamar pounding the ground, down 13 points, interceptions, things going wrong. I mean, we've seen that script, and we've seen it get out of hand. It didn't get out of hand on Sunday. As a matter of fact, they got a, that, that play, that Mark Andrews play you talk about, really did turn down the, the, the heat on the water. You know what I mean? It sort of leveled things out a little bit to say, all right, we're in this game because one thing they haven't been done is blown out by the Titans, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, if you don't complete that pass to Mark Andrews, again, there's three quarters of football left. So I'm not going to sit here and say they lose the game, but the scenario presents itself that you're punting the ball back to the Titans. You're already down 10 nothing. Your defense, which struggled in the first quarter, we know they were – dominant after that but at that point they're going back on the field and what are they thinking all right Lamar offense what are we doing here guys you're facing one of the worst defenses in the NFL and you know we're trying to stop Derrick Henry a 2,000 yard rusher and this Tannehill guy makes plays with play action so you just know that there's that possibility that things can snowball at that point but Andrews makes a catch a terrific throw on the run from Lamar Jackson a terrific catch on the sideline and from that point on, again, that was, that was the deep breath moment. You know, not, I mean, they didn't score on that play. They, they still had to move the ball uh, a good bit to get in the field goal range for Justin Tucker at that point. But once that happened, a- everyone exhales and says, okay, we're playing a football game. We got off to a bad start in the first quarter, but we're fine. And that was something, that was a moment that they never had in last year's playoff loss. 
they get they give up the touchdown early on after the interception. They get stuffed on on fourth and inches. And the next play, what happened? Tannehill throws a touchdown, a deep ball, and it's 14 nothing, just like that. And you're look you're shell shocked. And at that point, you could just tell that they were in trouble. And not that the score was out of hand, uh, but they were in trouble. So uh, the well, Andrews they were in played, trouble down 10 nothing, right? I mean, we you know, like to your point, uh, they were in trouble. But but you're really not. Unless you don't make a play to, to turn the tide a little bit. I mean, it's not as though it's not as though the Mark Andrews play was a Hail Mary, a 60-yard fluke of a play. It was a tremendous play made by your MV, reigning MVP quarterback and your Pro Bowl tight end from a year ago. So it's not as though that was an impossible play, but it was such a critical play because you don't want it to get, get to a point where Tennessee has a chance to go up 17 nothing, and then – then you're really starting to feel it. And, and that's where at that point. Or you make a mistake, like a fumble, you, or the ball goes off the eight and the nine and up into the air and goes back the other way. Ask Roethlisberger about that. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's so, so that was just such a critical play. And it's, look, there were plenty of important plays uh, over the course of 60 minutes, but I, I still look at that play uh, as the play that calmed things down early on. And then you're fine. Then you're playing three, three more quarters and you get a field goal. You're down by seven points. No big deal. And, and at that point, that's where you are able to calm yourself down and, and you're playing a game. And then at that point, it was all Ravens. I mean, think about it. From that point, Tennessee had, I think, 80, around 80 yards over the final three quarters. They had one field goal over the final three quarters. And you know, not that it was a, a dominant offensive performance in terms of points scored. I mean, the Ravens scored 20. That, that, that's nothing special, but they controlled the tempo. They played their style of game. They rushed for over 230 yards. Uh, Lamar Jackson did his thing uh, in spectacular fashion. The game was over 345. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, that's, that's how they they win. (laughs) They were able to uh, impose their will. And on the flip side, and maybe it's just the Ravens Titans playoff lore, another 2000 yard rusher, as was the case with Jamal Lewis in 2003 playing at home against Tennessee, absolutely shut down. Uh, by the opposing defense and and kind of eerie to see what the numbers were. I mean, you go back to 2003, uh, Tennessee held Jamal Lewis to 35 yards on 14 carries. The Ravens held Derrick Henry to 40 yards on 18 carries. By the way, that was the game where Schwartz locked me in the office down with the Titans and made me watch it. So, <laughs> right, yes, because right. he was the architect of uh, holding Jamal to 35 yards that day. No question. Anthony and, Wright may have played a role in that, by the way. And, well, <laughs> Anthony Wright didn't get much help, though, is the point. And Anthony Wright wasn't the quarterback that you're wanting to put it all on his uh, throwing arm. I'm, I'm so. trying to think of who the skill position players were on that team. It probably Your, wasn't. Todd Heap was the top receiver, and they had, you know, as a tight end, and they had Travis Taylor, who – was okay at best that year, and Marcus Robinson, who Marcus had the great Robinson, game, great thank game you. against Seattle, but not a whole lot beyond that. He played pretty well. Uh, remember, he had a little bit of a rapport with Anthony Wright, but kind of amazing once again in, in this rivalry that you know how I feel about Ravens Titans. As I said to you last week, Ravens Titans was Ravens Steelers before Ravens Steelers. Quite frankly, I mean it really was. When you it was our first 90, rivalry, sure. Ninety nine through two thousand one, it was every bit as nasty as what Ravens Steelers would become at, at its nastiest moments. Uh, but uh, the road team wins, right? Uh, I mean that's what it comes down to. The road team <laughs> wins. The, the the team that's even though in this case the Ravens were, were the. It's uncanny, right? Five games, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, um, and you know this is the sec- second time in the wild card. Uh, most of the time, these teams are playing in the divisional round, and one team's the number one seed. So not quite those circumstances, but hey, it was the Titans playing at home. Yes, Vegas had the Ravens as the favorite, so it's not as though you view it as an upset on Sunday. But uh, just Ravens are dogs in Buffalo, by the way. So they yeah, are two they and a half point and, dogs, and they should be, and they should be because uh, again, as much as people will look at it and say, okay, we even just talked about it a few minutes ago. Yeah, they're avoiding Kansas City and, and delaying that for a potential AFC championship uh, showdown. But anyone who's watched the Buffalo Bills over the second half of the season, don't be happy you're playing them either because uh, they're playing darn good football. And, and, you know, they had their choppy moments against Indianapolis, but that was a reminder to me that it's the second season. <laughs> the playoffs are a different animal than the regular season. And who's learned that lesson uh, more than anyone over the last couple years, it's the Baltimore Ravens. So uh, looking forward to uh, a great matchup in Buffalo Saturday night. Already saw uh, it's going to be cold. Saw there's a, you know, early 
I don't know how much you put into it because there, there's a chance of snow showers every day in the winter in Buffalo, but uh, it's going to be cold. And But it's not going to be like 10 below. It's going to be 30 degrees. Right? Yeah. I mean, that, yeah, I checked the weather because I have a flight and I move things around. I wanted to ask you about this, and this isn't just a point spread question, but this is just more an ideological question, mm-hmm. which was we've watched over the last five weeks that they beat up bad teams. They barely beat Cleveland and, you know, the whole Lamar running to the bathroom and the Ivy and the cramps and all of that. And what really happened, of course, whether toilets were flushed or not. But winning 20 to 13 in the playoffs, that's how you win playoff games, right? Like the notion you're going to win 45 to 6, all things aside of what Cleveland did to Pittsburgh early in the game, it was 35 to 7. Sometimes those things go off the tracks and there's 51 to nothing games. I was at one of them. I gave Amy Trask a hard time over the weekend. I found my Oakland Raiders Bills championship game ticket from the Jay Schrader mess up there. Mm-hmm. We're watching the Buffalo game and going to Buffalo this week. I'll, I'll probably write a little bit about that this week and talk about it here. But the notion that when you get to this point, dude, winning by, you know, fractions is fine at this literally like yeah. th- there there are only wins and losses when you're doing it on the road but it is hard to sort of be impressive and say well the Ravens are going to put up 40 against this awful Titans defense before the game and stand a little disappointed that it didn't go better I, I was a little disappointed with the Ravens defense early in the game and I think that's something we need to speak about because the new enemy is um, he a Terp, Stefan Diggs, and, and, and Allen, and what they did to the Ravens last year in December 13, 14 months ago now, that we're going to be looking at that matchup and saying, you know, how good are the Ravens? And your headline at Baltimore Positive when I woke up on Monday morning, you know, tracking insurrection amongst other things, w- had to do with the fact that they're now a Super Bowl contender and they've sort of arrived. I would feel more like they arrived that they would have beaten the snot out of Tennessee. Um, they didn't, and that's okay, and that doesn't mean anything for Saturday night. But just on a can they go to the Super Bowl, can they win a Super Bowl, can they beat their kryptonite in Kansas City next week if they get through Buffalo? We all sort of thought they were going to Kansas City this week, right? That, that the, the effort was impressive enough to me to make them an underdog in Buffalo, right? <laughs> You're getting value with the Ravens this week if you really think like you do, that they've arrived and they're back to sort of being where they were last year. Well, I mean, it comes down to this. No one's guaranteed. Uh, I mean, just because you say someone's a Super Bowl contender doesn't mean they're going to go out and do it. <laughs> you're, you're, you're expressing the belief that they can. And... Well, they were a double-digit favorite this time last year. Now they're an underdog on the road. The perception yeah. is, yeah, they won 20-13. to 13. Lamar's awesome and the defense is okay, but they're not well, as the good defense, as they were the last year was, and they the certainly aren't going to beat Kansas City and Buffalo's a hot was... team, right? The defense was great on Sunday. After the first quarter, it was tremendous. I mean, let's not – because Tennessee's not at Kansas City's level or, in my opinion, at Buffalo's level, that's still a a top-five caliber offense this year. Uh, They had a 2,000-yard rusher, and uh, even though in terms of volume with their passing game, you have to look at their passing game as you look at the Ravens' passing game. What does the efficiency look like? What does the yards per attempt look like? And from, from those metrics, that was a top six, top seven kind of passing offense that, that they just stopped. Now, I Corey thought they Davis, could win a Super Bowl. I mean, maybe not their defense, but t- I'm not anti-Tannehill. I mean, the more I've gone into Tannehill, the more I'm like flacco Stafford-y, ryan You can win with that guy for me. I, I think he was sort of – his reputation okay. got smudged in Miami in that way. In the same way probably Trubisky's is smudged now, though, you know, he was no great shakes on Sunday. Well, I mean, Ryan Tannehill was in Miami and you know, for, for a couple years looked like he was going to be the guy there. And then after that, it kind of subsided and you, know, you had different coaches and, and it didn't work out. You know, he, he, he's a guy that's in a good situation. Uh, and, and that's the case for most quarterbacks. I, I think other than the, the rarest of the rare talents, you're talking about guys who need to be in the right situation, the right system, have the right coaches, the right players or, you know, right skill players around them the certainly the offensive line matters but but yeah I mean that, that that's that's a Tennessee offense that played at a very high level and you know so so what I saw from the defense I mean even okay they they struggled in the first quarter they gave up 10 points they didn't give up three touchdowns in the first quarter well, let me say this so, it's the first time he's really had the whole defense kind of together in a long long time right and kind of healthy right we, we talk about what Campbell and Brandon Williams represent on a Sunday afternoon that's what that that's the difference there is that you can stop Derrick Henry, stop a, a decent offense, stop big receivers because we're built that way when you have Jimmy Smith and other guys out there and and pitch a 13 point January game on the road. Right. I mean, that's almost 
Ray Lewis turf, right? I mean, 13 point game on the road. That that's, You'll win every week if you're doing that, literally. Sure, and to expect them to hold Buffalo to 13 points, to hold Kansas City to 13 points, probably not realistic. And In fact, isn't realistic based on just, it's really tough to do that multiple weeks in a row. But at the same time, and this goes back to what I said or earlier in our conversation, when you've done it, when, when you've accomplished that in January against a, a legitimate team, and say what you want about the Tennessee Titans in terms of, their defense and what it meant for their Super Bowl chances, they were the AFC South division champions, and they were a team that beat them last year and scored 28 points against them uh, last January and, and came back from a double-digit deficit in the second half in, in November. So it's a feather in your cap. It's a notch in your belt, so to speak, to say, look what we just did. That's not to say that you're satisfied with that, but it gives you that mental lift if you're in a position where you're down 10 points in Buffalo or heaven forbid down point 10 points in Tennessee or, or in Kansas city, excuse me, that now you, you have this to, to kind of rest on a little bit in terms of uh, the mental makeup uh, in terms of overcoming so, some adversity. And, you know, we've talked about that throughout the year, that the way this team's been tested, the way this team went through uh, a much more difficult path to get to this point again, unlike last year where everything went, for the most part, almost perfectly uh, after late September uh, and a couple losses. So, you know, it's just a, it's a case where they won 20 to 13. You don't put too much stock into the eyeball test. And, you know, as much as you could point to the first quarter or you point to, hey, they only scored 20 points against the lousy defense. It's not how this works in January. I'll remind you, Kansas City was down by 10 or more points in each of their playoff games last year. And they won the Super Bowl. Was that the script for Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes? Of course not. You don't want to fall behind by 10 points. Or uh, in the case uh, when they played Houston, they fell behind by, what, 21 points, 24 points, whatever it was. I mean, it was, it was a huge deficit early in the game. So you, you can't plan for things to go perfectly. You can't plan to just look at your scoring average or your defensive points allowed average uh, in the regular season and say, oh, that's what's going to happen in the playoffs. That's why you play the games. And that's where uh, if you're the Ravens, you love what happened on Sunday. It wasn't a perfect performance. And, and that's where you take some confidence moving forward that, no, they didn't have a great first quarter. And they got off to a slow start on both sides of the ball in the first quarter. And they won the football game. And they won on the road. And they beat a team that uh, had had their number the last couple years. So from that standpoint, you go into Buffalo. And, yeah, the, the Bills deserve to be the favorite based on the body of work in 2020. But – I don't think the Ravens have anything to be scared of, uh, especially now. You've won a playoff game. You've beaten a playoff caliber opponent. You've come back from a 10-point deficit in January on the road. So other than the potential opportunity to slay the Giant in Kansas City next week, and that's, of course, assuming you take care of business against Buffalo, there's nothing you look at at this point now with the Raven, if you're the Ravens and say, oh, I don't know if we can do that because – of what they accomplished on Sunday. It's just, it's that next checkpoint that they've accomplished. You know, we talked about this a little bit with what happened in Cleveland on that Monday night and Lamar Jackson coming back and, you know, they take the lead and uh, Cleveland ends up tying it up and then they drive again and, and kick the game winning field goal. How we talked about how that was an important step for them. You know, this is another one. And, you know, now the, the, the narrative shifts from can Lamar Jackson and the, this era of the Ravens win a playoff game? Can they, come back from 10 points down. Yeah, because they just did those things. So now everything else ahead of them seems a little less daunting than it did before Sunday's game. He is Luke Jones. He is Baltimore Luke out on Twitter and Facebook and everywhere you are and in Owings Mills and in press conferences and asking Lamar Jackson questions and I'm asking Derek Wolf questions. You can check all of our coverage out out at Baltimore Positive. If you're on our tech service, you're getting all the updates during the week. We are getting ready for Buffalo on a Saturday night. We are going to be uh, covering all things democracy and impeachment here this week. Don Moeller's joining me for that. So a little bit of split coverage around here. Big things going on certainly for Festivus this week. Um, no bus trip to Buffalo. Uh, Luke, I, I don't know if you're happy or sad about that, but uh, I would give you all week talking. The last question, I, I'm trying to think, like, what am I going to do for fun in Buffalo for an hour on a Saturday afternoon? What do you think? Uh, 
wings from the anchor bar, I guess, takeout. I, I'm just hoping <laughs> that's we don't about, get that's about three feet of thinking. snow or something like that. But uh, I am There's always a possibility. Well, you know, <laughs> I've been going to Buffalo for playoff games for almost 40 years now. So uh, I'm going to go back into the Wayback Machine, uh, tell some stories this week. We're going to go up to Buffalo and uh, talk to some of our friends up there as well. It's going to be a big, big week around here. Festivus for the rest of us. I'm Nestor. We are WNST.net, AM 1570. Tass in Baltimore, we never stop talking. Baltimore, positive.